And good morning, good morning. Welcome to another online edition of Motion to Adjourn. And today we have a very special guest, a very honored guest. And we'll be speaking you know, about a topic that affects everyone. If it's not affecting you now, it's going to be affecting you sometime in the future. So today I have the honor of presenting my parliamentary colleague, MP Ianthea Simmons Wade, JP MP. How are you doing today, MP? I'm doing wonderful and I'm excited to be here on your show and to share our message. Okay, tell us before for the for the for the small percentage of the world that doesn't know who Ianthea Wade Simmons Wade is, tell us briefly about yourself. I am a mother of three wonderful triplets. My late husband was Al Frederick Wade. I, two year, two and a half years ago, I was appointed to the Senate. And in 2020, I was elected as a member of parliament for Ward Northeast. And it's been a privilege and a pleasure to serve my constituents. I'm also okay. the chair of the Aging Well Committee and that is why I'm here today to talk about our seniors and the need for us as a country to focus on seniors. And tell us, before we get into the substantive topic, tell us a brief about your constituency's um, work. Work. Which one, in North, which one is it in work? <laughs> it's constituency 25, work Northeast. I have an interesting mixture of people uh, that are in my constituency. I feel many of them are homeowners. I also feel that the population is very interested in what happens in Bermuda. I feel very supported by the individuals and my constituents who contact me, but the challenges they have in Warwick are challenges that we have all over the island. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what are, briefly, what are the two top challenges or, or challenges that are presented by your uh, constituents? I would say immediate, as most people say, is the roads, um, but more so it's the cost of living and affordable and accessible health care. Okay, which gives us a good segue into Aging Well Committee. Tell us what is the Aging Well Committee? The Aging Well Committee was started in 2017 and our basic role is to provide recommendations to the minister in regards to issues on aging. Some of the issues are relating to education, comprehensive accountability, the strategic workforce, uh, education, um, employment and financial security for our older population. Okay so as we um, we had a robust um, but uh, through a speech debate the other day, and one of the points raised was that um, around the world that there's a trend towards raising the retirement age. What? Why is that happening? Our individuals, our seniors are actually living much longer and they're much, I would say, healthier and they still have much to continue contribute to the community past 65. Now, as you know, the retirement age has increased for civil servants, but it has not increased for the general public. Um, government cannot require private organizations or businesses to raise their retirement age, or have not required, I should say. But when you look at other countries, I'll use Canada, for example, there's no retirement age. So oh, really? when you turn 65 in your birthday, is that it? You you can't contribute, you can't give. For many of us, yes, they can. And I think it's something that we as a government, as a country should seriously consider in regards to the fact that we have so many seniors who still have much to contribute to this country. Yeah, because I actually called one of my constituents on Sunday just to check up on them. They, they brought up that topic that Someone said to them, oh, you're retired now. You retired from wherever place you worked for a long time. And he says, no, I didn't retire. They retired me. And I'm sitting home and I don't have much to do. 
and I say that in the sense to say this is a person, as you say, is very healthy mentally, physically, and can still still get up and make the donuts for lack, for lack of a better term. So, you know, as as we are shifting our mindsets with a number of things in our in our society, is there a shift that a person should be able to work to 67, 70, so on and so forth? Um, as I mentioned, it's certainly occurring in other countries. And given our current situation with the shrinking workforce, I would consider mm -hmm. it as something very essential, not just what they bring to the table, but the fact that we are having less and less people working. By 2036, the individuals over the age of 65 is going to represent 33% of our population. This is a major mm -hmm major number and the graying population is going to have a significant impact on government and on every single ministry so yes i do agree with you that this is something we as a country need to relook at and seriously consider so just for clarification is this happening happening solely in bermuda or is this happening in other places around the world the rapidly Graying population is significant around the entire world. But I think Bermuda, it is more apparent because we have a small country. We have a small country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because my, my mother, she, um, without aging her, she she retired a, a while ago, right? And she still got, you know, she may have, this doesn't happen for everyone, but she still has as much energy, if not more, than when she did when she retired. And I'm not saying the date. But um, the point I'm getting at is that we have to, We there was a time that life expectancy was only 64 years old. Now life expectancy is around 85, 90. So, yeah, people, some people before was like, oh, I'll be happy if I could live to, to, see, to see my retirement. And the majority of people working age population, no matter what profession you're in, most people are living to, to the retirement and then some 10, 15, 20 years thereafter. So we do really do have to, not, not just solely for um, pension purposes, but for the, for the mental well-being of those people that are retired that really would like to remain active, right? And, and, um, Chris, the challenge also for many people, you're living longer, you're retiring at 65 or 70, and then you have the challenges of trying to survive in a country where the cost of living is so high. So what actually happens in many cases, if you're not prepared for retirement, this then creates an additional burden on government because people do not necessarily have the means and a lot of seniors turn to financial assistance. Yes, because I think I think according to um, statistics, the majority of persons who are on financial assistance are not are persons who are seniors, right? There are seniors and persons who are physically or mentally challenged. There isn't isn't so much people that who aren't working, but it was the seniors that are the got contained with rent, the got contained with ever increasing. Um, grocery prices, healthcare, so on and so forth. So the government the government has a duty to, to take care of these folks. And often, Chris, what tends to happen is seniors and people who are disabled will never come off financial assistance. They're not going to suddenly mm -hmm. even get a job or suddenly get healthy. So these numbers will continue to increase. Now, if those individuals were given the opportunity, and many, many of them would prefer they could continue to work, which will result in financial assistance not having to deal with someone at 65, 70. Unfortunately, what tends to happen is many individuals do not adequately prepare for retirement. Either they choose not to, or financially they cannot afford to. So we have this increasing population that as a country, we're going to have to take care of. Mm -hmm. So, with that being said, what are some of uh, the Asian Well Committee's initiatives to educate 
future retirees as to what, what they need to be doing now? One of the things that we've actually done, we've put together, and this should be coming out soon, is a brochure on planning for retirement. Um, very often, people do not, you're going to retire and it comes quicker than you think you should. So there needs to be planning, there needs to be discussion, there needs to be things in regards to where you're going to live, how you're going to live, um, looking at the coverage for your insurance, how you're going to manage that. There are so many things that we don't stop to think about. And retirement also means deciding and having that conversation with your family in terms of your wishes and who's going to be your healthcare proxy, who's going to have your power of attorney, where are you going to live? All these things are things that we don't stop and think about. And I tell people mm. whenever we have a conversation is unless it's in writing, it doesn't exist. It's very interesting, but your children and your family members all have different recollections in regard to of what you wanted and who's going to get the car, who's going to get this. So it's important to have the conversation and to document your wishes in terms of preparing for retirement. And it's also important to understand and to know the benefits that are, that are available, be it your pension or any other support that you can get in, in regards to housing, that you are aware of it before you need it. And, and how do, when you engage with persons on these topics, how, how do you feel it's received? Well, it's interesting. One of the one of the roles that we have unofficially taken is to become almost like a call center for seniors. So what tends to happen with our members, our members, once they get on the Aging Well Committee, they get asked for not so much advice, but in terms of services and things that are available. So what we have actually done is we've gone into the community to talk about a the Aging Well Committee, but we also... That's interesting because these are things we're going to do moving forward. But the most important thing that we've done is going into the committee and talked about navigating the aging process. And it's not so much a presentation. It's more of a discussion. And people have the opportunity to hear the types of things that they should consider and take into consideration. But more importantly, they can share the ideas and the information with people in that room. And it's really surprising the number of people who have not thought or considered anything in regards to aging. And even more so, the types of ideas and information that people share that makes navigating the aging process much easier. Because we're all going to age. If we don't die, we're going to age. Yeah, that's, that's the now Nobody stays the same age, right? Yeah. Let me ask you this, sir. Um, Many people would know about age concern and there's some, maybe some other groups. Is there collaboration between Age and Well Committee, Age Concern, and or other groups? We actually have uh, some members from some of the groups, Age Concern is one of them, that sits on the Age and Well Committee. As in the role of the Age and Well Committee, one of our primary responsibilities is to ensure that the minister is aware of what is going on in the community and to make recommendations to government to ensure that seniors are front and center in any legislation. Uh -huh. It's interesting, the things that come up when you go around the community and people call you and you talk about what's important to them. Sometimes as a government, we make the mistake of deciding what's important to someone as opposed to getting the information to ensure that the direction that we're taking is what those individuals most need or more concerned about. So it's so important as members of parliament to listen, to understand what the challenges that seniors are and what they face. Yeah, because um, in any in any given constituency in Bermuda, just just doing a little um, statistics here, right? In any in any given constituency in Bermuda, there are approximately, I don't know, 1,250 persons, right? And if you do a pie chart of how many persons are 65 and over, every constituency works out to be roughly 
25 percent to 30 exactly. percent of that constituency are are um over 65. Over the age of 65. so if you use that as a snapshot then that that's an overlay of the entire population right now again going back to the fact that many persons use well sorry life expectancy was lower years ago the fact that any one of us who are MPs when we go around or call around, you have a a literally hundreds, every MP has hundreds of, of seniors in their constituencies. A lot of these seniors are still active. Some, a small percentage may be um, physically bedridden, right? Very small mm -hmm. percentage, but I would venture to say 85% of 85% of our senior population are still active, right? And when you go around and you call, a lot of them are just happy to see the MP, right? Because not they're not going to discuss politics or what they saw in the newspaper. They they really don't care most most of the time, right? They just are happy to see the MP come in and pay them a visit, and they talk about, oh well, I remember your grandpa. I went to one gentleman's house. He's like. Oh, I know who you are. And I'm like, you know me? He says, yeah, man, I was a little, little kid. I stole sugar cane out of your grandpa's um, garden. And your grandpa said his pigs on me. <laughs> right? So the point, the point I'm saying, getting back to tying it in, is that as, as elected officials, right, these are the people that vote for us. Or whether they vote for us or not, these are the people that we represent. And as MPs, we need to have more knowledge for ourselves, to educate ourselves for our own retirement, educate our family, and to be able to educate um, our singers. But as you said, we need to listen as well, right? And, because and what I find I is with you. a lot of singers, they would say, "Some one of uh, the yeah. question I get very often is." What is the what do you mean it's it's gonna impact us and impact this government? When you stop just general ideas, as you get older, there's gonna be a certain point where you're not gonna drive a car, which means accessible mm -hmm. and available transportation is very important. When you look at finance, you have less people working that's gonna impact your pension. When you talk about health care in the ministry of health, you got pe more people with chronic diseases more people that need insurance, more people that need caregivers, social programs, you know, education. You're going to have more people. What are we going to do? You have the seniors clubs very often, but where is the money going to come from to provide the assistance for people that are living longer? So when you really stop and think about it, seniors, the growing numbers of seniors are going to significantly impact the cost of running a government. And it's very important that we are ready for it. So the Ministry of Youth, Social Development and Seniors is currently in the process of develop, developing a national senior strategy. This strategy is gonna be a blueprint for this government in preparing us for the rapidly aging population. And as an individual with parents, grandparents, or even children, it is so important that you take the time to talk and to prepare yourself for growing old. One of the things that are really, I tell people all the time, people want to live a long time, but you want to live a long time and be healthy. You don't want to be, quote unquote, a burden to your family. So it's important that you take some personal responsibility to ensure that you live healthy, you have a good life. So that as you age, you age well. And that, that's really important for the whole aging process and also important from aging well community in terms of ensuring that we have a, have a healthy aging population. Because what I, what I find with um, the minister, uh, Honorable Tineve, is that some some people have ministries that they have to get learned up on 
And Bermuda, and I say Bermuda on a hill, is fortunate that um, Minister Frederick, in her her professional occupation, is caring for seniors. Her professional mm -hmm. occupation is occupational therapist. And this ministry, she was made for this ministry. And she has, um, she along with yourself, at one time, um, Deputy Speaker Derek Burgess, have made the fact that Bermuda's population is aging is not a stigma. This is something we have to embrace. We there's there's no one that wants to be oh I have to go around to Augustus and make make funeral arrangements for my parents, right? No one wants to do that. But you have to deal with the fact that our parents are aging and how do we um modify our, our own lives, our own um habits, you know, you can't go it as much if you got to stay in and check for your parents or whatever. Um, these are things that as a country, we have to embrace and embrace it with pride because I would rather, I would rather have to stay in to make sure my parents are okay than go, than have to be going around Augustus and making sure the headstone has got the right name on it. Um, we have a question come in and I'll let, I'll allow you to answer it because this is the type of person that if I answered and I answered it wrong, they would um I never <laughs> heard the end of it. So are we talking about the national um, senior strategy? I guess when you're asking about the policy. So let me just assume you're talking about the national senior strategy. The national senior strategy, most countries actually have a national senior strategy. And they take this time to meet with various experts and professionals in the areas, as well as the third world, sa third sector, to get information in regards to what we have to do. It's also in relationship to ministers in the various ministries, so we can prepare for our aging population. So it's an entire process. And like I said, this is something we're kind of late in the game developing it but better late than never, that it's important that as a country that we have a blueprint to determine what we're going to do to deal with a rapidly aging population. Okay. Now, I know that this person, if, if they have any follow-up questions, I'm sure they will send it in. <laughs> One way or the other. Yes, the National Senior Strategy. So, let me ask you this, sir. I'm aging. You're aging. What 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 advice do you give to yourself about uh, um, aging well? First of all, <clears throat> it's important that we take care of ourselves, and that includes exercising and eating well. And one thing that's important, and people don't realize how important it is is the whole aspect of socialization. So I always use this example, especially with the um, when we had the pandemic and people were, huh. So what happens? People were by themselves. They had food, not everyone, but most people. They had food, they had shelter, they had water. But what they lacked is companionship. What they lacked is the socialization. That is so important in regards to the entire process of aging well. That is just so people underestimate it. And so sometimes you have situations where people will say, oh, my mom is good. You know, she's OK financially. She has food. I drop food off to her. You know, but the thing is, you can have water in your house and not get a bath and not drink. You can have food in your house that your family will bring to you, but you don't eat. And then you're there and you're lonely. All of that impacts on aging well. So I think that's a focus that each of us, like I said, needs to take personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So let me ask you, uh, uh, as we're starting to wind on, with, with the fact that the, the inevitable fact that our, as you term, you use is a grain population is growing, right? What what would be, if you, if you could, flip a magic wand, and within the next two years, three years, for example, what three key things would you like to see being 
place for the growing population, ourselves included. You mean you included? Okay. Um, I would like to see was, more was, emphasis. I'm not great. But... <laughs> okay. I would like to see more emphasis to additional support for people to be able to age in place. And aging in place basically means to keep your family member at home. And very often we're not in the situation um, to do that, but it is healthier for the family. Before we used to have multi-generational families, we don't have it anymore. We just don't have it. Because grandma sometimes is working until she dies or you're at home and you don't have someone there to mm -hmm. you know, support you at home. The other thing that I would do, would suggest, or I would consider to be important is to provide the, I, will, I don't wanna say a greater financial assistance, but certainly more financial support to our seniors. I think as a country and as a government, we are very committed to our seniors. And each time we as members of the aging committee hear things that could make a difference in people's lives, we share within the various ministries. And I certainly think that I would say financially looking at the cost of living and there are different groups and organizations, and I'm talking about banks, et cetera, that without the requirement of government, step forward to give discounts and do things for seniors. And I think as a country, not government, because government cannot mandate it, but as a country, we could look at many of these companies and businesses that are making a lot of money that can do more things to provide assistance to our seniors. But basically, I think as a country mm. and as a government, we are showing the level of commitment to ensure that our seniors are safe and have good quality of life. Well, I'm gonna give you something off my wish list. <laughs> um, we, have, we have, again, being um, realistic with our, our trends, which is the trends globally. We have a lower birth rate and we have a higher um, age growing population, right? And one of the yes. one of the inevitable things of a lower birth rate is that, you know, putting um, semantics aside for a moment, schools are going to close, right? We have less children for a variety of reasons, right? Let's be frank. But the fact is we have these physical structures that are going to be empty. So one of my wish list to yourself and the, the, the honorable minister is that somewhere in the near future, we convert at least one of these schools into um, senior, senior care, whether it's just for daycare or whether it's for long-term um, care because the reality, one of the challenges, which will come to another question, one of the challenges we have in our country is that seniors go to, if a senior takes sick, they go to the hospital, the, the, the family, whoever the family unit is, may not be able to deal with them, but they have, they could deal with them in the hospital. They may not be sick enough to really stay in the hospital, but they're not really well enough to come in. So herein lies this, this um, situation where we have a number of seniors at the uh, acute curving, and it's called the backlog of, of beds and so on and so forth. Right. So what do we do? We, we have to say, okay, well, we can't, this situation can't remain. And, you know, once, once things are settled as to which schools are got to close and so on, which is a whole nother topic, um, I, I think, right, I will be lobbying for one of the schools Right to 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 get converted into a, a senior care facility because we it's inevitable. What we have more and more seniors, so we're going to put our loved ones. I don't mean that like you know, storage wise, but I mean like you know we want them somewhere such as you have um you have uh, uh Lorraine work rest them. You have um. um Freud House, you also have Sylvia Rich, you have a, many, but anybody who works at a senior care home will tell you they don't have enough bed space, right? So actually, it's very interesting so, you bring um, that up. That's Chris, just because, my wish list, right? Yeah. It's interesting you bring that up because I have already um, approached the minister to try to confirm which facilities are closed. As you mentioned, I'm actually the administrator of Lorraine Nursing Home. 
we have been at 100% occupancy no, for the last 10 that. months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for the last 10 months, we've been at 100% occupancy. We also have a day program where people are continuing to try to bring their loved ones there so they can keep them at home. So it is important that day programs are expended because the reality is mm -hmm. you don't have a loved one left in a hospital. But if you have a day program, what will be important is that you could Drop off mom, just like you dropped off your child. They have a wonderful, exciting day and they come back home. And this allows you to keep them home for a longer period of time. Also, the benefits of future care and financial assistance for qualified individuals, they also provide assistance with daycare and they also provide assistance with um, caregivers in the home. That is something that government is doing to ensure that individuals can age in place. Now, the other thing, I, I just wanna briefly go over, Just uh, I'm just gonna give you the headings, but I talked about getting your house in order and navigating the aging process. The most important thing is having that conversation with your family. And it's not an easy conversation when you're talking sometimes to your children about, well, you know, I want you to have an understanding of my wishes. And the first thing that happens, like in my family, mom, is something wrong with you? Why are you talking about your funeral? Why are you talking about things like this? But it's a conversation that we need to have. And very often it only comes up when somebody's dying or a family falls apart because everybody's snatching things. So in the presentation, or I say discussions that we have had around the community, we touch on a couple of topics I'm gonna give you. Getting your house in order, right? And that's talking about your estate, your power of attorney, and all sorts of things like that, right? Having a conversation with your family. Most important, having a vision of what, what your retirement is going to be. Are you going to stay in your house? Are you? Where do you want to live? Where do you want to be in a rest home? Do you want to live with your family? Most important, your health. What about your insurance? What are you doing to take in consideration of what's going to happen with your health? Big thing. Health insurance, what are you doing to ensure your health insurance is going to be in place? So there are so many things that we need to talk about. Caregivers, who's going to take care of you? Who's going to manage your finances if you don't have any, anyone else? So it's so important that us as seniors talk about not just ourselves, but age 50, you need to start looking at things like the government initiative that allows your house to become accessible with a low interest loan. You can get that at 55 years old. You can get rents, you can get railings. So the most important thing I will share with the people that are listening is to get your house in order, prepare for aging. And if you haven't, talk with your family, talk with your parents to make sure that they will age healthy. Mm -hmm. Well, with that, I want to thank you. This is thank you for your first um, conversation with us. This is not your last, and um, because this is an ongoing topic, and we need to continue to, see, to educate ourselves and educate the people of Bermuda as to what they need to do, what the government is doing, what the government plans to do. Because um, I was seeing others to set the foundation for us. What whatever my generation is is because my parents' generation, my grandparents' generation, as with all other persons, put these things in place. And we have we have a duty to um, to take care of them because this year alone, I've seen a lot of my friends have to make that drive to Augustus funeral here. And um, it was, it's heartbreaking to see grown adults cry. But if they didn't love their parent, they wouldn't cry, right? Um, so I would say for those of us that still have our parents, that is one or both, treasure them, take care of them, sacrifice all you can for them because they did it all for you. Any closing remarks to the people of Bermuda? Um, yes, first of all, I'd like to thank you. all of my members of the Agent Well Committee. I believe they're certainly committed to ensuring that seniors in this country have a good quality of life, have memories, and are comfortable and safe at the end of their life journey because they have given so much to us as a country. Like you said, they've made us who we are today. 
we stand on the foundation mm -hmm. that they have built. So Chris Famous, thank you for this opportunity. Yeah, and I look forward to, in the future, sharing the message and providing as much information as we can in terms of taking care of and respecting our seniors. Okay, thank you. Um, any final words to the people of your constituency 25? Yes, as your member of parliament, I am here to serve, serve you, to listen to you, and to advocate and work on your behalf as your member of parliament for all of my constituents in Ward Northeast constituency 25. Thank you for putting this faith in me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so as a bit of housekeeping as we close out, this will be available on Facebook for the for until the internet ceases to exist. It's also going to be on our YouTube channel. And um, this will be replayed on our radio show, Power 95, uh, if not this week, next week. So we want to continue to have these, um, I guess you say, multimedia sort of ways because when you're on the radio, people you don't know, people can't interact the way they can online and so forth. So I want to thank you to those that have sent in questions and comments, especially my cousin, the Trini boy, Gary Moreno, whose wife, my cousin, threatened him the other day. So he about to behave himself else. He won't get to see, see long age, uh, aging well. So uh, MP, Ianthea, Simmons Wade, thank you for all that you do. Thank you for this opportunity. All right. Bermuda, we love you. Take care of yourselves and age well. And take care of your family and your parents. Yes, indeed. <laughs>